All right, so our next topic is unit vectors. Right. Um, now, the definition here, the word unit, it just means any vector of magnitude 1, right? Um, so if u is a unit vector, well, that's just the same thing as saying magnitude of u is equal to 1. Okay. Um, so unit vectors are something that, that they do come up. They come up, um, they're common things to study in physics. They also show up in linear algebra um, and in calculus. Uh, they do come in handy. Uh, and these are um, mostly useful when sort of only the direction matters. All right, so we want to use a vector to specify a direction. Um, the magnitude of the vector isn't actually important for the thing that we're interested in, and so we, we often, in that case, use a unit vector, so we're focused on the, on the direction, and we sort of standardize the magnitude so um, everyone is agreeing on the vector that we're, we're using. Okay? Now, um, we will see some places where um, unit vectors come in handy. Uh, there's one particular example there are these so-called um, standard uh, unit vectors. Um, and, and these are often used as a way of expressing vectors. So the standard unit vectors, um, depending on whether you're in R2 or R3. Um, in R2, there are two standard unit vectors called I, which is the vector 1, 0, and the vector J, which is 0, 1. And it's pretty easy to confirm that both of those do indeed have magnitude 1. Okay, And in R3, we again use i and j, but of course now those are um, three-dimensional vectors, so we have three components, so i is 1, 0, 0, j is 0, 1, 0, and we need a third vector which we call k, which is 0, 0, 1. Okay. Um, now, I think one reason why these are convenient, especially from sort of a uh, a physics point of view where you are sometimes jumping back and forth between two-dimensional and three-dimensional vectors is, you know, you can use i and j, re these refer to vectors which point along, you know, so it's sort of like the, the x direction, right? Um, whether you're in two or three dimensions, same thing here, this vector points along the y-axis, so it represents the y direction. In three dimensions we also, of course, have the, uh, the z direction. Right. Um, and so you can sort of use I to represent either of these sort of interchangeably and understand by the context whether it represents a uh, two-dimensional vector or a three-dimensional vector. And sometimes that kind of simplifies some of the statements that you want to make because you don't have to worry about, you know, okay, am I writing my vectors with two components or three? You can just use I and J. Uh, and then what happens is that you can write say a vector, say I have a vector v, a, b, c, well you can write it as v is equal to a times i plus b times j plus c times k. You can write it in terms of those standard unit vectors. In a linear algebra class, um, you would refer to these as a, as a basis, right? So you say this is the standard basis for R2 and the standard basis for R3. Um, in calculus, we don't really bother so much with that language. Uh, to see that this, these are indeed equivalent, uh, well, just substitute in, right? Let's do, we're doing the three-dimensional version. Zero, zero, one. Right? Use the rule for scalar multiplication. This becomes a 0, 0, 0, b 0, and then 0, 0, c. And then 
Use the rule for addition to combine these together, and you are going to get A, B, C, as expected. Okay. All right, so that's good. Um, the other sort of thing that comes up is, is how do you actually get a unit vector? Right? And you want a unit vector you know, in, let's say, in the direction of some other vector, say v. And of course, it can't be the zero vector. Right? The zero vector has no direction. It doesn't make sense to ask for a unit vector in the direction of the zero vector. Right? Um, but for any other vector v, well, so basically, we want it to be in the same direction. Right? And we'll, we'll, we've sort of seen that scalar multiplication, in a sense, it changes the magnitude, but not the direction. Right? And so we want some vector u, and it's going to be in the same direction as v. So it's going to be some scalar multiple of, of v. Um, and same direction, I don't want it to be opposite, so we'll require that this scalar c be bigger than zero. So imagine that I have some vector u, which is a multiple of the vector v, right? Well, then I know that the magnitude of u should be the magnitude of c times v. And we saw in a previous video that that's the same thing as the, well, the absolute value of c, but that's just c because c is positive times the magnitude of v, right? Without the requirement that c is bigger than zero, we'd need absolute values there, but we know that c is positive, so we don't need the absolute value. Okay, um, and we also want the magnitude of u, we want it to be a unit vector, so we want this magnitude to be one. Okay, well, that lets us solve for c. c times the magnitude of v has to be equal to one, and that means that c, has to be 1 over the magnitude of v, right? And we're excluding the zero vector here, so uh, the magnitude of any non-zero vector will be non-zero, and so that makes sense. We're not dividing by zero. And that gives us the unit vector as 1 over the magnitude of v times v, right? So if somebody hands you a vector and you want a unit vector that's in the same direction as that vector you were given, you just divide by the magnitude and then you'll have a unit vector. 